Good morning. Thank you once again for joining us this Tuesday morning as we continue to prosecute the concept of using the tongue wisely. And uh, yesterday we were able to look at the reason why we need to use our tongue in an appropriate manner. Today, I want us to look at what the tongue should voice and especially when it has to do with wisdom. Eternal Father, we thank you for today. Release the kind of wisdom, dear Father, that makes our lives reflect your glory and that we may bring uh, walk in sync with what we have professed and confessed through the Bible. And dear Father, speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 3, verse number 13 to 18. Chapter 3, verse number 13 to 18. Who is wise and understanding among you? We are still handling the book of James. We are in chapter 3 today. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his uh, that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Please don't lose sight of those words, meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. The wisdom that does not descend, this wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic, for where there is envy and self-seeking, uh, and where self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first of all pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. Lastly, now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. The highest and the most blessed use of the tongue is to convey wisdom. The highest and the blessed use of the tongue is our ability to convey wisdom. We already know that wisdom is a gift from God, that when you lack it, we know. The beauty about lack of wisdom is that you can ask and you shall receive from God who gives liberally and without reproach. Wisdom is the ability to see life through God's eyes and, live, and, and, and to live in conformity to his word. Wisdom is the ability to see life through God's eyes and live in conformity to his word. Whenever someone lacks wisdom, the things that show very fast that this person is lacking wisdom is instability, as we established that in chapter 1, verse 5 onwards to 6 and 7. But then also we establish that when someone lacks wisdom, is easily going to be uh, a person who is uh, wavering, it's like the, the waves of the sea. But then when you possess the wisdom that comes from Jehovah, your life becomes so stable, and then that is now why we are still talking about being slow to speak being slow to speak. The reason why there is this uh, call for self-restraint in the words that we speak is so that we manage and handle the after effects of what we say. Because to mitigate the impact of your words is to measure the words before they are said. Because if you don't measure the words and you say something that can easily damage other people, you may not handle the after effects of what you said. That is why to mitigate the impact of what you are about to say, first of all, check whether what you are saying is peaceable, is gentle, is true, you know. We need to learn to discern between genuine wisdom from God and counterfeit version. We have to literally check whether, whether what we are about to say is genuine or counterfeit. Because there is that wisdom that does not come from above. <laughs> 
there is a wisdom that does not come from above. The wisdom that does not come from above is earthly, sensual, that is verse 15, earthly, sensual, demonic, and you know what? It pushes envy and self-seeking, and therein confusion is the end result. The nature of true wisdom is that when it comes from God, it is the word of God implanted. It is controlled by the Holy Spirit. The wisdom itself is consistent with the nature and the works of God. The wisdom that comes from heaven is consistent with the nature of God and his works. When we don't have the wisdom of God, it shows in the way we behave. Because the nature of God controls the way we behave. If we say we are created in his image and in his likeness, then it means our nature ought to be reflective of his nature. So if his wisdom is not reflected in the nature that we portray, it means now that wisdom is earthly, sensual, and demonic. But when it is from God, it is peaceable, it is gentle, it is willing to yield, it is full of mercy, and the fruit is good. The clearest example of wisdom of God is the earthly life of Jesus Christ because he is the wisdom personified here on earth, according to Proverbs chapter 8. Let's consider these few marks of wisdom that are true wisdom. True wisdom is visible in honorable conduct. True wisdom is visible in honorable conduct. How we conduct ourselves shows whether we are walking and operating in true wisdom. Don't forget that we are in chapter 3 and we are confronting this thing called being slow to speak. Because if you speak words that are not full of wisdom, you will speak words that are careless. Hmm. True wisdom is visible in honorable conduct. True wisdom is the works that originate and produces meekness and submission to God. I have had people make very, very outrageous statements, especially when it has to do with um, the relationship between husband and wife, and especially the millennials and the Gen Zs. This word called submission is a word that they don't ever want to hear anything about it because the way it has been displayed and portrayed by our mothers going backwards is that it was either um, yielding to oppression, yielding to manipulation and being, you know, uh, put down and stuff like that. Yes, nothing could be further from that truth because they could have lived in that era because of that particular upbringing, again, words that they were taught. But then, walking outside of submission does not invalidate the principle because of your education, because of your exposure, because of your appetite and arrogance. It does not invalidate the principle. At the end of the day, still, the Bible is not wrong when it says that the head of the woman is the husband. It does not invalidate that. Much as the women would want to be empowered to become the heads, you can't be the head of the family even if you wanted to. It is away from the biblical structure of God. And if you are to go to the theological aspect, which many people would want to throw away that principle, I know the Bible was written in the patriarchal culture of the Jewish orientation. But that again, uh, Jesus has come to put a balance to it. We are co heirs. We are all sons. Jesus has got, he's put that balance. But then, living in the wisdom of earthly principles does not invalidate the wisdom that comes from God. 
And challenging the concept alone of headship in the family, simply because either you have one or two, three advantages financially and stuff, does not make you the head. It doesn't. I wish it could. It, could. it, it doesn't. The, the same way, jumping into a swimming pool will not make you an amphibian. It won't. Anyway, let's deal with the wisdom. The works of true wisdom originate in meekness and submission to God. I'm not in any way trying to portray the men to be superior beings over the women. I'm not in any way discussing that feministic, gender-based discussion. I'm not in that orientation. I'm more structured in the wisdom of God not as a discussion point, but a principle to be obeyed that will bring peace in the home, peace in the family. The wisdom that is from above is the fruit of the spirit. We discussed that adequately in the subsequent episodes. The wisdom from above is the manifestation of the fruit of the spirit. If there is no manifestation of the fruit of the spirit, then that wisdom is earthly, sensual, and demonic. <laughs> the wisdom of Jehovah manifests itself and it plays out in the fruit of the Spirit as captured in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. And deviating away from this, the Bible says against such, there is no law. There is no law. We are setting ourselves up to more damage and more chaos within the family dynamics when we deviate and move away from the biblical principles and adopt earthly wisdom that is sensual and demonic. The wisdom that comes from above, the wisdom that comes from God, sows the seed of peace it sows, S-O-W-S. It plants the seed of peace. That is the wisdom that comes from. If you want to see wisdom in display, then find the fruit of peace in the house, in the life of an individual, in the business aspect, in everywhere, in, actually in all the spheres of life. If the wisdom does not precipitate a certain seed of peace, then that wisdom again is sensual, earthly, and demonic. The wisdom that comes from heaven is the seed of wisdom that bears the fruit of righteousness. It's the wisdom that bears the fruit of righteousness. Many people look at this from, uh, we interrogate this matter from the position, is it interrogation really, or we argue out this matter when we look at the product and then we judge the product now based on the raw material. Nothing could be further from the truth. I still insist on that. The seed of wisdom bears the fruit of righteousness. God's wisdom is a product of, uh, let me just rush quickly to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 19. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19. Then let me show you something. Then we can close with this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 says this. That it is, uh, that is, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses on them, but has committed to us the word of reconciliation. He has imputed in us the word of reconciliation. Verse 20, now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God was pleading through us, we employ you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. 21, lastly, for he made him who knew no sin, sin for us that we might become the righteousness of God in him. If anyone claims that he's in Christ, if anyone claims that he's in Christ, then we must also acknowledge that the old is gone 
with its nature. The new has come with the nature of Christ. The old is gone with its nature. The new has come with the nature of Christ. And that is why we can now prosecute life from the wisdom of the regenerated being. From the wisdom of the regenerated being. We are justified by faith. We have been washed and cleansed by the blood. We have been um, um, reconciled back to him. And therefore, the fruit that we should be bearing today is the fruit of reconciliation. Every time you find the division among brethren, that wisdom alone is sensual, earthly, and demonic, regardless of the justification points. Wisdom that comes from above is peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, willing to yield, and willingness to yield is what makes reconciliation impossible. So when you see two people being reconciled, where, when there is an attempt to reconcile two people or two communities or two warring factions, every time you see an unwillingness to yield, it means the wisdom they're operating in is first of all sensual, it is demonic, that wisdom is earthly in nature. There is a verse that is so interesting here, verse 16, chapter 3, says, For where there is envy and self-seeking, and where self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. Every time you see all manner of evil manifestations, all manner of evil manifestations, just know that there is envy and self-seeking. And I've seen this even in the body of Christ. In the house of God, wherever there is selfish ambition, self-seeking, wherever there is envy, believe me, everything that is evil manifests in that. It will inevitably manifest. And you wonder, how come these people are praying and speaking in tongues, yet they are victims of this envy and self-seeking? Eventually, all manner of evil manifests there. I want to believe that we are moving and migrating away from this earthly wisdom that is sensual, demonic, and earthly. I want to believe that we are moving to the wisdom that is peaceable, that is gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, and the end result is that there will be good fruit. Eternal Father, we thank you for the grace to walk this path however difficult and confrontation it is, uh, confrontational it is to our attitude, to our feelings, to our thought patterns, dear Father, I pray, help us to be willing to yield that we may be reconciled back to you, back to ourselves, and back to the fold. In Jesus' name, amen.